So, what's your village? Small town USA, the big city, mobile home park, the suburbs. We have all of these villages here in America. But to get to my village, I need a passport. My village is a traditionally patterned village. It's a walkable place with narrow streets and vibrant plazas based on thousands of years of building tradition that preceded the automobile. And it doesn't exist in the United States. This wasn't always my village of choice. 25 years ago, my village had a population of one, a cabin in the woods on the largest, most isolated piece of land I could find. Though my grandfather was a weaver right here at the Batesville in Lewiston, I grew up outside Maine in rural Pennsylvania and suburban Florida. I saw the woods that I played in as a kid divided into housing lots and posted with no trespassing signs. And I decided that as soon as I could, I would find a place where I would never have to worry about that. Only four and a half hours from Boston is a county that's larger than Delaware and Rhode Island combined. And with a population of less than 18,000, it's the most sparsely populated county east of the Mississippi. I moved there and built my home on 20 acres of land, Piscataquis County, Maine. Years later, our county has a dilemma. Our residents are fiercely protective of our rural life, but most also want options, employment options, cultural and entertainment options, a broader choice of local goods and services, all of which require a certain critical mass of population. But the forecasters are telling us that we are in the grip of a demographic winter, which is a chillingly poetic way of saying that more of us are dying than being born. How do you attract residents to a county? How do you do it without compromising the rural character of the county, which is your reason for being there? Traditional villages and cities astound me with their compactness. My hometown, the village of um, Dover Foxcroft, with only 1,000 households, could contain Venice, Italy, which has a population of 60,000. Old Quebec City, within the walls, is only about 800 yards across. Millions of people spend thousands of dollars and travel thousands of miles to experience traditional villages. Many return disappointed we don't have them here. How to attract residents without compromising rural character. So this is our idea. Our Piscacus Village Project is a proposal to create a village here in the United States based on traditional urbanist principles. We envision a 125-acre modern rural micropolis encircled by 375 acres of farmland in central Maine. A specially composed set of building covenants will guide the development of the site into the type of human-scaled, mixed-use traditional village that was typical around the world up until a couple of hundred years ago. This is no nostalgic plan to build an old world theme park, but it is recognition that the timeless patterns embodied in traditional urbanism offer the best practices for the future. We've distilled the characteristics of these traditional villages into six key design elements upon which we're going to base the building code for our project. Small plazas, really narrow streets, attached buildings, sheltered sidewalks, interior courtyards, and car-free. Small plazas are the most vital element in the village. That's where the eating, drinking, and people watching happens. Plazas exist in all climates. And though the activities may change depending on the season, the plaza is always where the economic and social action is. Traditional villages are thousands of years older than the automobile. The streets are designed for walking, socializing, and playing, not driving. They're narrow. 8 to 15 feet wide is typical. Our design calls for narrow streets, yet wide enough for emergency vehicles and freight delivery. What's warmer? A glove or a mitten? Traditional villages are built of attached townhouses, often with commercial space on the ground floor. Multi-level, connected buildings are easier to heat and cheaper to build. In pedestrian villages, buildings front directly on the sidewalk or street. Arcades, integrated into village design, shelter people from the elements and dark skies from light pollution. In snow country, they're invaluable. Arcades can provide continuous cover enjoyed by everyone, but perhaps especially appreciated by the elderly and those with mobility challenges. A street network 
with buildings fronting directly on the sidewalk, yields blocks with open interior courtyards. This is semi-private space, owned individually or in common by the encircling lot owners. The green courtyards are perfect pocket neighborhoods for co-housers or other groups that share common elements. The 125-acre village is large enough and dense enough to contain a critical mass of, of population for an internal economy. With a diameter of less than 900 yards, the walking time between the two most distant points in the village is about 10 minutes. This allows vehicles to be parked outside the village at the perimeter, no more than five minutes away. It's tough to find contemporary examples of traditionally patterned villages. We've just seen half a dozen images, mostly from old Europe, to demonstrate these key design elements. But philosophically, these places are pure Yankee. The traditional Yankee virtues of common sense and ingenuity, thrift and economy, are exemplified in the traditional village. Their compact and walkable layout minimizes initial cost and maintenance expense of streets, buildings, utility infrastructure, and parking. This is old-fashioned, original green sustainability. We estimate we need to raise $2 million to get this project on the ground. This may seem like a modest amount for a grandiose goal, but in reality, our task is modest. The village project itself will not construct buildings. Our job is to create fertile ground, to set into place the conditions for the organic and incremental growth of the village by obtaining the legal approval to implement our own alternative building code. We will need to acquire a building site and will be responsible for the placement of infrastructure. Traditional villages being inherently compact, we ex estimate a building de density of 35 to 50 lots per acre. The first phase of infrastructure will certainly occupy no more than five acres. Revenue from the sale of building lots in the first phase will fund infrastructure in the second. An idea is only as good as the ability to implement it. Capital for this project is being raised from those who have made a sincere but non-legally binding pledge to invest in the project, contingent upon the project meeting the $2 million total for costs. As of today, we've met one-fifth of that goal. Never underestimate the power of good design. Successful communities have been designed around golf courses, airfields, and equestrian facilities. Seaside Florida, the setting for the Truman Show, is an icon of the design style known as New Urbanism. And though built 25 miles away from the nearest town, attracts residents due to the quality of design, as we expect to attract residents due to our old urbanism design. Piscataquis County is the setting for Thoreau's book, The Maine Woods, a land of abundant fresh water and forests, fertile soil and rail lines, all valuable resources in the coming century. This is a final frontier, where for a village of this size, Suitable building sites remain unoccupied, and bold solutions are not only possible, they're necessary. We don't claim to have it all figured out, but we do know this. Villages have been built this way for thousands of years, for good reasons. A simple plan. Create the conditions for a community to naturally evolve, guided by traditional patterns. Not the field of dreams, build it and they will come, but till the field and the village will build itself. Thank you.